Hello YouTube friends. Today's topic is uh, Mabuna. Buna versus Hap versus uh, Peacock. What's the difference? Which one should you be keeping? And uh, you know what uh, is there is there a, a preference? Is there an advantage to one over another? Um, you know, like many fish keepers, uh, many African cichlid f fish keepers, when I first got into the hobby, I was uh, just really uh, intrigued and, and uh, excited by all the different colors and variations. And so I did what a lot of um, African cichlid keepers do, do and that was uh, I picked up a little bit of everything. I mean, if you go back to some of my earliest videos, you'll see uh, Tanganyika, you'll see, you know, you'll see Tangs, you'll see uh, Frontosa, you'll see uh, SP45, right, a Victorian in there, you'll see just a whole variety of fish, and of course, Buna and, and Peacock and Haps all mixed together, and as I moved along, I started to develop some preferences, I started to notice some um, inconsistencies or differences between what these fish needed to really thrive, and uh, certainly they can survive uh, in uh, just about any environment. But the, I started to, to struggle a little bit with the question, uh, what can I do so that they actually thrive, not just survive? And um, and to do to really answer that question, I had to study, and I had to find out what was the difference between these fish, and how could I put together a group that I felt good about. Um, that's maybe a journey that is similar to yours, I don't know, uh, but I brought some people that I consider experts uh, in my mind, certainly have done a lot of impressive things with uh, with their own fish keeping, and I've been following them for a while, maybe you have too, and uh, let's find out what uh, these two gentlemen uh, have to say about the differences between um, Buna and Peacocks and Haps and uh, the advantages and disadvantages and any comments they might have on these different types of fish. So let's start off with um, uh, one, of, one, of the, uh, one of my favorites on YouTube, Adam C. Adam C., uh, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this subject? Hey, what's going on YouTube? Adam C. here. Thanks to Ben for having me on today. So Ben asked us to talk about peacocks and bunas and haps, what our experience was and uh, what we think the easiest of the three is to keep. Um, so I did like a lot of other people, I started off with a buna. Uh, my experience was that I just couldn't solve the aggression problem. Uh, looking back now, that's mainly because of my inexperience. It's the first cichlid I'd ever kept, that was probably 10 years ago. And if I had the knowledge that I have now, I probably could have addressed the problems and, and got it taken care of. But the, I didn't have any problems with feeding them, you know, they like more of a veggie based diet. But again, the aggression was the reason that they drove me away. I added rocks, I took rocks away, raised the water temperature, lowered it, you name it, I tried it, but it just didn't work at the time. But again, I put that blame on myself because they were the first fish that I really tried to keep and my inexperience really led to my failure in keeping them. So from there I moved on to uh, peacocks, Alonacara. Uh, no complaints at all with pe keeping uh, the peacocks. They enjoy a protein-rich diet, so it's a little bit different different diet than the Mbuna was, but uh, they have about every color in the rainbow to offer, depending on what type you'd like to keep. Um, similar to Haps, usually the two or three most dominant fish in the tank, I had a little bit of a problem with aggression, but that's just that's just how it's going to be in an all-male tank, which is what I kept with peacocks, similar to this Hap tank. Um, there's really nothing you can do about that. That's, that's their biology. That's what they're going to do. Um, the only reason I moved on from peacocks to haps is peacocks, though they're beautiful in color, they generally keep the same shape. So I wanted to move on to something a little bit bigger. Uh, they gave a little bit more variety, not just in color, but also in shape as well. So I moved on to the haps here in this 220. Um, again, similar to the peacocks, it's two or three fish that usually seem to drive aggression. The other ones seem to fall in line. Uh, the, two and three, the two or three in this tank are the Nototania, the Lepturus Green, and the Malawi Trout, wherever he is in here. I don't know where he is, right there, right in front of me. Um, those three are always seeming to battle for aggression. So it's a similar experience that I had with the peacocks, just on a larger scale. Some people think haps, predator haps, big fish, um, aggression is worse. But I, I disagree with that. I think what, what people don't factor in is that when there is aggression in the hap tank, the fish are bigger when they're chasing each other around. So it's going to sound worse. There's more water being thrashed about. You can hear them hit the glass. 
Um, it's just it's peacock aggression on a bigger scale, and none of it's all that bad. It just it sounds worse than it really is. I mean, I have aggression in this tank, and you won't find hardly any nymph fins. It's just your perception of of uh, hearing the commotion from time to time. So, in closing, I've kept all three. Um, I think I was successful in two of the three, but the Imbuna, I think that was my fault, um, not the fish's fault, so to speak. So, um, the other two are fairly similar in, in maintenance. I do 50% to 60% water changes about once a week. I feed um, you know high protein diets to them, and uh, really no problems. So I think if you're willing to put in the time and the research, uh, no matter which type of, of cichlids you want to keep, whether it's you know Imbunas, peacocks or haps, you'll really have success if you research what you want to do. So thanks again to Ben for the spot today and see you guys next time. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate those comments and uh, certainly you've got uh, some uh, incredible, incredible haps going on there uh, behind you that uh, Buco is uh, one of my favorites. And um, thank you so much for participating in this. I've also invited another gentleman that you've seen in, in several collaborations of mine in the past and whose opinion I, uh, I hold in high regard, like I do Adam C's. So let's, uh, let's, uh, take, let's take a look at this subject uh, from the viewpoint of uh, IFG, the inquisitive fish guy, our very own Evan Alexander. Evan, what's your take on this subject of Buna, Hap, and Peacocks? What up, YouTube? IFG, and I'm back with Ben Ochard and Adam C. Thanks for the spot, Ben. Let's talk about peacock, haps, and mabuna. In my opinion, all three of these fish will display some form of aggression in your aquarium. However, mabuna seems to be the most aggressive of the three. Keep in mind, guys, mabuna requires lots of rock work in your aquarium. In fact, the name mabuna means rock dwelling fish. Peacock, on the other hand, as well as haps, don't require as much rock work because these guys are free swimmers. Now, ever since I've been keeping predator haps, the aggression in my aquarium has went way down. So I would have to say, in my opinion, Mabuna are the most aggressive. And if I would have, and if I had to pick out an aggressive peacock, I would say the OB peacocks are the most aggressive peacocks in the hobby. Thanks again for the spot, Ben. Thank you so much for contributing. Thank you so much for your opinions, both of you. Uh, I appreciate it greatly. Um, you can, if you hear some gurgling in the background, I'm doing a water change. I have my tank emptying out as we speak, at least down to about 30%, 40%. So uh, just in closing, I'd like to hear your comments. What are your thoughts? What has been your journey in, in, uh, in keeping African cichlids? Did, did you start off with a particular type? Did you shift over? Did you evolve into something else? Um, what did you learn? Why do you keep the kind of fish you keep currently? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious. I'm interested. Uh, bring the conversation over to the, to the Facebook page, to the uh, Ben O. Apostrophe Cichlid. Let's hear about it there. Um, you know, a lot of folks um, put combinations of fish together that are pretty interesting. In some cases, they get along okay. Um, in my case, when I had Buna together with peacocks and haps, everything was fine as long as the uh, Buna were small. And uh, But once they became comparable in size to the peacocks and haps, they became very, very aggressive, very protective of parts of the tank. And I could see that there was a trouble in my future. And that's when I made the tough decision to, to sell uh, and to give away some of the uh, Buna that I had which you can see in my earlier videos. I had a beautiful yellow lab, a yellow tail. I had a, uh, you know, several several uh, uh, fish that I uh, raised, you know, brought up from fry and were very, very pretty. But then I made the decision to go with peacocks and haps. And then ultimately, this will be a, a entirely a hap tank and the peacocks will be in the 60, as those of you who follow my videos know. So I've, I've moved in the direction, in the direction, even though I resisted it and fought it at first, and thought I would be the exception, I, uh, I have moved in the direction of specializing and keeping more species specific, though not entirely uh, species specific, uh, more or less in the direction of species specific. So anyway, that's it for now. Your comments, opinions below, please. I, I love to read them. I do respond to them, as you know, and even Adam C. and, uh, and Evan can jump in, jump in on the comments 
and uh, give you some responses, okay? Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. You're very appreciated. We're just uh, just a, a nano, uh, a nano, just a small space away from hitting 5,000 subscribers. Uh, get the word out. Share the channel. Let's break through 5,000, and let's let's keep it growing. You're all very appreciated. All right. Thank you so much. Bye for now.